Ranger. He constantly beats everyone else. He does great in scrims. He's known as the scrim god, which is probably partly why C9 was interested in him as well. It's crazy because it does. It, 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 even even though there's like an inkling in our minds, there is. Is this really a thing? But it is. You hear it from every player. It's not just kind of a rumor. It is crazy, and Golden Glue holds that spot for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something we've always heard about a lot of players is their scrim performance doesn't always match their, their in-game one. Phoenix, for a little while, was known as the scrim god as yep. well before he finally started being able to translate that on stage a little bit more. Let's see what we have here translating into bands before we get into our picks. That is a Kog'Ma on the side of C9 Academy with a Zier. And there's Orn and Zoe immediately with the rise coming in from CLG Academy. A lot of mid lane focus here, very understandable. You saw what Zoe can do last game, you see now why people ban her. Yep, they also just don't want to deal with a strong top lane. We have seen Orn fall a bit here in the past few plays. And what will be the hit for C9 Academy? A Vlad. Vladimir is also an interesting ban. It's something that we haven't seen here yet, I believe. Maybe in a, you know yesterday's games it was played a little played bit, yesterday. not on broadcast. Uh, and it's something that's played sporadically in other regions. It is seen as one of the good carry top laners. There are a couple right now. Uh, you see a lot of GP, which is getting covered right now. Vlad, Ryze has made an appearance up there. There are a couple that can fulfill that more aggressive carry play style. So Shwani locked in for Omar God, something he trended towards during his time on Counter Logic Gaming. It looks like it will be the Ezreal first lock in on the side of C9 Academy. Grabbing that Ezreal, one of the highest priority champions, still left up here. And the Sejuani, like you said, very understandable. Will C9 Academy match with the Jarvan? It feels like something, at least for today, teams haven't been willing to overextend on. If you want to take Sejuani early and put another ban on Jarvan, go for it, seems to be yeah. the current motto. Not a problem for a lot of these junglers. Wiggly will lock in that gangplank. I love that guy. Had him on the desk a few times. Actually, is pretty wiggly. Yeah, he is a, a little, little bouncy, a little wiggly. <laughs> Always moving. We'll see what he can bounce around in this game. He hasn't got his pick yet. We'll see if that's the final one. Yeah, maybe it's the Zach match that kind of energy. Uh, the GP is one that I'm going to be excited to watch with Shiro because, like we said, he is pretty hyped up. Uh, C9, they, they drafted him with their first pick in the uh, Drake draft, which is what they use in the scouting grounds to right. form the teams to play with. And then they moved up to use the first overall pick of the entire Scouting Grounds draft to actually grab him for the Academy. Ooh, right on. Yeah, and there was actually a lot of movement for Cloud9 in that draft. They got their focuses, but also there's a focus now on Champion Select. Yeah, I got it. I tried to. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Urgot, here we go. Uh, we've seen a couple interesting top laners thus far. Urgot joining that list now after your from the previous game. And it's something that if you've been following League of Legends since last year, you've actually seen it a little bit as yeah. Gigabyte Marines broke it out a couple times. Once successfully against Cloud9 themselves, actually, they played it into a yeah. Shen and beat it. So, you know, maybe Cloud9 Academy getting a little taste of that as well here. Also have a blind Ori, minus the forest, going up against the Talia now on the side of Academy. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Uh, Talia, yeah, uh, pretty understandable champion for Golden Glue. Played it a fair amount. It's uh, a staple in the meta. Has a lot of roam. Has a lot of pressure in the matchup. Uh, generally is, is favored versus Ori, not in terms of individual mm -hmm. kill threat or anything, but just how much impact you can have on the early game. And there's that Jarvan ban as well, kind of Hits following that. Yeah. Hits out the Callista as well on the right side. Auto will not be grabbing that. The Urgot's interesting. <laughs> you don't say. And it's not just an interesting pick, but the, the, the position that it showed up in, the Yorick kind of came in late in a response. Yeah. And it was like, all right, well, I know the rest of your team, maybe the Yorick will work here. Uh, and, and here you're taking it before some other priority champions like a Tristana or a Kalista. I mean, did you really think that Urgot was going to get banned out? Uh, I don't know if he's playing it a ton in solo queue and it's been scouted out. Right. I'm not sure, but it, it does feel potentially like a little bit of an overreach. We'll have to see. Fallen Bandit saying in the beginning he wants to show what he can do. He's still there. He's still got it. He's going to have to put the shotgun knees to work in this one. See if he can put up that in, those impact plays. Zach actually got banned out. No wiggly wiggly. And we have the Tristana band on the other side. Tom Catch makes it through those. They have that AD carry protection or protection for somebody on the team. But Bane getting hovered now. We've seen a lot of play in solo queue and the likes. Yeah, it's also pretty popular into Ezreal. Yeah. Uh, Ezreal doesn't push super hard, and Bane does still uh, struggle with pushing champions a little bit more. So Ezreal is not a terrible matchup for the Bane to play. And then once you get into like turrets down, 1v1 situations, she usually does quite well into him. So it is understandable then if they said, you know what, let's take the, the 
uh, Urga on the top lane here, and then we don't need to worry about Vayne getting banned out because who's really banning Vayne in yeah. the current meta? Covered it. Chose Taric. Good choice for now, just considering with the last few seconds here and wasting, or using all the time, I should say, to figure out what these picks are. Wasting yep. time. Wasting time. Go lock that Vayne in. You know on. you want to play it autofill. Got dinner coming. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Zaya locked in. And it looks like they'll have a bit of safety for her as well. I could, I love the Zaya pick because a lot of it is denying death in the AD carry, usually always. But always having your own, I'd like to keep focus on the AD carry, see if they know their positioning. And usually the Zaya, as we've been seeing lately, pretty decent at it. And, and this this team comp looks very much like a CLG team comp, minus potentially the Urgot. <laughs> um, point, yeah. But but <laughs> the uh, the Ori, the Sejuani, the Zaya, three champions that combo together super well. We saw it all the time in the LCS between who he and yeah. the other members of the team pulling everyone together. Sticks they throws the ult on top. We saw some explosive damage from that. So uh, a similar idea here, and it's, it's no surprise that these guys learn a lot from, from the main team. Absolutely. We'll have to see 36 seconds on each side. Summoners aren't popping out just yet, and we'll have to see what the runes are as we get into game. Pretty safe on the bot side. I was thinking they were going to take Ignite, but it's both exhausted at this point. Seeing what CLG Academy can do, they did have a loss yesterday, like you said, to 100 Thieves, who got perfect game today. So CLG, considering yesterday, a little bit of a mishap. Omar God didn't have the greatest time in the beginning of the jungle. He kind of got thrown around a little bit. Yeah, and it's it's uh, not a great sign, given that, like we said, CLG Academy struggled a fair amount last year. Uh, they're, they're staying together. They have the most synergy. You know, they should arguably have the most right. for, going for them into the season, and, and here they are struggling in their first game. It is a best of one. It's understandable. Sometimes you just lose. Uh, but if they go 0-2, it is not a, a promising start. C9 Academy looking to go 2-0 as their win yesterday over the Golden Guardians Academy. Helped them a little bit with confidence. We'll see if it helped them with the synergy and continuing to get those wins here. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily the cleanest victory. You no. Had to have a big comeback. <laughs> uh, and you, you want to see, you know, improvement. It feels nice to get the wins. Nerves out of the way, but Got to perform a little bit better than that consistently. Yeah, absolutely. You can always say it's a win, but how did you get that win? Yeah. Was it a bumpy road? Did they all AFK? <laughs> did you zig when you should have zagged a lot? Did they all AFK? Yeah. Exactly. These are the questions that need to be asked. Looking around, we have our relics in the bot. Keeping it true to getting the gold, as wow. well as some refillables to the potions of CLG Academy. Not a ton of stopwatches here, actually. Mm. Only four. I mean, maybe maybe saying only four sounds a little disingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> only 40% of the people. Usually you're like, oh, what all four are they on? What side? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so a little interesting to see that. Um, Urgot going with Arcane Comet uh, as his huh. Keystone Mastery. You know, I've seen different takes on what people think you should do with him. Arcane Common is generally seen uh, offensively as the best thing you can go with. Some people take Airy in other matchups, not great for, for Urgot. Uh, Comet makes a fair amount of sense. Yeah. If it's up, you land the Q, you're going to get a fair amount of damage. Oh, it's not fair at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see why people say press the attack for the W, procs, and all that, but. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. You kind of always have to keep focusing yourself in. Uh, it's kind of like you use your shotgun knees and you don't want to go all the way around, so. Like, I want to be in, I want to be out. It's cool if I can get a little comet damage in. Here, it is in, in, in. A little bit of uh, lane control on that wave. Even before hitting two, damage over to Shiro. And this is a, a big test for Shiro right away. Pick GP, a little bit of a weak laning champion in terms of battling people, and you get counterpicked right away in your first match on broadcast ever. <laughs> well, I guess not ever, because Scouting Grounds did have some True. broadcast matches. Absolutely. Don't take it away from him. He's got it. All that history and experience. Hopefully to be used here today as he just mines gold in the top lane. Yeah. <laughs> Staying alive from Fallen Bandit. The pressure right now, actually, Wiggly, almost in the eyes of Omar God. They may have a positioning on him, and they do. But Wiggly's going to keep that aggression in the jungle. And it looks like he may be able to tunnel up and under into a safe spot for gank. Oh, He's buying his time, though. Could bode well for mm. Cloud9 Academy if he decides to go for it. Looking like they're backing off. I mean, Fallen Bandit is playing relatively safe. It yeah. indicates that he might have an idea of what's going on. Not pushing nearly as aggressively as he was during level one. So 
Good play by Fallen Bandit, respecting that the Rek'Sai can have some creative gank pass, even though that ward is up there, in no way are you guaranteed to be safe. So I gotta remember, Urgot can dash as well. So it's always good that he can keep himself in that position. Get out a little bit of a dangerous spot. Yashiro and Fallen Bandit continue to farm it out, 17 to 10. As he gets pushed into his turret, he should be able to clean that up. Omar on the bot side, as Wiggly's gonna take advantage of that. Go ahead and start taking out some Ramblers. Or, yeah, advantage, but he's on his own side. Right, absolutely. Bit of a farming going on for mm -hmm. both junglers right now. Haven't found a gank opportunity. Bot lane is one that's pretty interesting as Wave's is pushing away and Wiggly is in the spot, but Tuesday is going to go down and ward. Keeping it safe. Back and forth, making sure nobody's in the jungle, making sure things are clear here in the early game, but it is causing a bit of roaming by a few members on the map. Cloud9 Academy. Shiro here looking to get the wards. Q and I'll just add a little bit of damage. He probably heals that back up before he can Q him again anyways, but why not? Take the love tap. Just let him know that you're there. Give him a little <laughs> bit of presence. Phil getting a little annoying, getting the sun off. If people don't know for some reason, uh, Otto is Zag, uh, the AD carry. He just renamed to complete the meme of the Otto Phil bot lane. Yes. The synergy started before the games this year for a lot of players. Sun, Eclipse, changing these names. Absolutely. It's got to start from the get-go. Wiggly now finding Omar God. Looks like he's not going to be able to give him too much trouble here. Small Raptors on the camp. And no pressure from Golden Glue means this is kind of Wiggly just figuring out, testing the waters of what Omar God's going to do. And right away, Shiro Hello. teleports back right into Fallen Bandit, who was waiting for him. Gets the toss back. Getting chunked out really hard as soon as he comes word. back to lane. That's one thing. He also teleported into a giant wave of minions as well. Prevented himself from getting that auto attack in, but still took a little bit of aggro and Fallen Bandit feeling pretty good. Has Omar God just under him for possibility of a hit here. Yeah, I mean, they did get a great chunk onto him. He has sustained fairly heavily with the uh, Corrupting Pot taking away. Yep. Kleptomancy also gave him a red pot. And it looks like they're going to back off. It's still fine for Fallen Bandit because he hasn't used his teleport. He can go back here, shop, and either run back to lane or teleport back to lane. The fact that he already got two corrupting pot charges out of the GP is actually a minor victory in and of itself. He will get consumables from the Kleptomancy, so it's debatable about how big of an impact it is, but it right. is nice to get that kind of lead just off of a teleport mistake out of Shiro. Tuesday's gotten some pretty good damage on. Quick Q and W. It is a big waster of the mana, though, if you can't get him to hit. So he kind of holds the ball, puts it in a good position. Always love to see Orianas kind of play the lane in two different spots with that placement and their positioning. So quiet compared to other games right now. Just everybody's fine with farming at this point here in our last game of the day. Yeah, and, and unlike some of the other times where it was slow for a little bit and then level six is hit and suddenly it's a Malzahar Hecarim. Yeah. You know, there's not as, as clear of a game plan for like we hit six and do this. Uh, obviously, Golden Glue on the Talia will want to get roams going, but topside roams are relatively difficult without real setup from the GP. Bot side, you have Tom Kench who, who can do some stuff, but Ezreal has no setup, so it, it might be hard for Golden Glue to find a, a clear place to alt. Uh, and on the flip side, CLG does have places with pressure, like here on the top side. Bandit felt very confident this entire time, and Shiro plays him into that false sense of security that he has advantage on the lane. What a wall from Golden Glue to say, I just need a little bit of this too. First blood to him on the roam. Just as we're talking about how it might be a little slow, Fallen yeah. Bandit gets baited into a false sense of security, gets aggressive as Wiggly collapses, holds the flash, which is pretty impressive. Must mean some good communication on the side yeah. of Cloud9 to say, don't flash after him, I got this. Nicely done. And Golden and Glue, after just farming out of lane quietly, picks up a little bit for himself, and that leaves Tuesday a bit in the dust. They're even on minions. There's gonna be starting to be items here for Golden and Glue as we see this play again. Yeah, we're talking about how GP has a little bit difficult at the time getting set up going. Well, you can just bait him in to use his escape aggressively. It, it suddenly becomes a lot easier to get that kill here. I mean, Golden Glue was a little closer than that had realized, uh, but is able to get involved for that kill. Nice communication that they're both collapsing. Cool. And here's some aggressiveness on the blue buff. Arctic Assault over the wall, almost getting shoved as well. That would have been quite a bit of damage. Wow, Fallen Bandit going hard now into the Herald Pit. That's the hit. That's the chomp down. And Fallen Bandit executes Golden Glue. Gets grinded up there. Woo. 
Fallen Bandit going aggressive. It's nice to see that because it, it's actually really hard to get away from him with how the ult works. If Even if, you know, Golden Glue had flashed the wall or something, you can pull him back over. Oh, yeah. It would have been nice to see if they wanted to try and bait that. It's something that can sometimes work as an Urgot. You, you hit them with the ult, they might not realize it, um, and they try and flash the wall before you pull them back in. Um, yeah. But they want the secured kill. Just get it, finish off Golden Glue, don't let him get out of there. Awesome stuff, I love seeing it. Little known fact, if you actually haven't died to it, your screen actually has these chains come up on it. It looks really cool. And Golden Glue is gonna see it again right here. Yeah, so there you see Wiggly gets chunked out a little bit. Omar God gets a little too uh, over eager to follow up on the damage Golden Glue was waiting for him, but that phase Golden Glue forward to get collapsed on by Fallen Bandit. And there you see he's close to the wall. You think maybe let him flash before activating the ult and yanking him back, but nah. a kill is a kill. You're an Urgot, you want that. Putting a little pressure on from that Urgot pick. That came in pretty early here for CLG Academy. It was something Cloud9 had to consider. What are we going to play against it? Maybe not too much. Well, it's starting to make a little bit of an impact. They were able to get a kill back onto him. And now we are down to the bot side. A pushed in wave, easily getting cleared out for some breathing room here for Otto and Phil. An 87 to 88 in a pretty even lane. Yeah, you see that, that how big that shield can get pretty easily just from the Taric W, the healing that comes in from the Relic Shield and Taric Q, and all yeah. of a sudden, that combined with Overheal, and if you ever finish that quest, you always have a massive shield on it that you can carry. A little bit of love for mid lane. Quick cleanse as well, and a possible turnaround from Wiggly, with just more aggression, showing that he's there, and his mid laner will not be messed with. Zazel, not a terrible spot, acquires a taste for Phil. This could be some big damage, actually. Phil needs the Cosmic Radiance to come down. Zazel still has the gray health. Oh, and a Q just hits. Cosmic Radiance was wearing off. It does not proc the damage. Shockwave into the mid lane. Doesn't have too much ball movement as he calls back to protect and cannot push it forward for the final kill. But might push Golden Glue out of lane. Getting pretty scrappy here. It is back and forth. Some summoners traded down the bot lane. Phil had to end up flashing out of that in the mid lane. Ultimates traded for some summoners once again. Tuesday wants to get aggressive. Golden Glue, knowing the damage, doesn't have to worry about it. Actually walks forward to finish pushing that wave in before recalling, heading back home, healing up. One to one. That's one for Golden Glue and one for your top lane, Urgot and Fallen Bandit. Probably still won't even get that much attention with that one kill. Just feels pretty good as he farms out the lane now. 73 to 82, keeping it relatively close. What is kind of the objective here when you have an Urgot? I mean, obviously you have an Ori, you can do some objective plays, but do you utilize him or is he just your guy in the side lane? Uh, he's often more just like your guy in the side lane. It's, yeah. it's not something where you often see people like super hard ganking it to snowball it or something quite like that. <laughs> Gotta get Urgot going. Yeah, he, he, he is usually a oh, bit of a bully as we'll wait to see if Talk about bully. Three-man dive coming down the bot lane will be successful. I'm sure Golden Glue's on his way as well. Playing that Cosmic Radiance down. Bastion already on to his 80 carry as he tries to keep Auto alive. That looks good, boys, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Double stopwatch, but they cannot stop the onslaught here. Auto lives an acquired taste just out of range. Sliver of health for Zazel. The heal comes in to ensure that he lives, but the call range of the feathers sweeps him off his feet. And that's a kill coming in for Auto. Not much Zazel could have done no. there if he ran up. He's going straight into Tuesday, goes down, hoping to avoid the last bit of range that yeah. Otto had to get that kill, doesn't get out, gives up the kill. A one for one, and there you get to see the power of that stopwatch buying time for the rest of the team to get baited in. The fight's that, still going. That cleanse is down from before. Shockwave after the Glacial Prison comes in. Arctic Assault and a few more flail hits could solidify that kill. On to Golden Glue. They make sure he goes down again after getting a bit more for himself. Bit of a mechanical misplay there on Golden Glue side. Does eat the mm -hmm. Sejuani ult, which is unfortunate, but you had a window of time to flash away from that Ori ult. Ends up getting hit by a pulled forward and then flashing. Still results in his death. Taking a look at this bot dive here. I think we could go long on replays. Let's see. We got a lot of action. Yep, so the GP ult starting things off, getting a lot of damage. And there, it could have been much better. They actually double stopwatch before anyone took aggro, I believe. <laughs> so this actually made this dive not as bad for Cloud9 Academy as it could have been. They do still get the trade kill back, which is nice to see for CLG Academy. But there you see, you know, if, if Zazel had started taking that a little bit earlier, he has to blow yeah. up his stopwatch and then the turret aggro resets and, and it can get into a very hairy situation. That autofill synergy really coming through, you can see there at the same time. 
Three to two is a slow game. Mounts up those kills. Not much map pressure as well to get them. It's kind of been a forced kill if necessary, and we just saw that under the turret in the bot lane. 101 to 105. See Urgot holding his own from Fallen Bandit. Yeah, absolutely. Gangplank doing just fine. Crypto Miner Gangplank. He's doing better than ever. a lot of people right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Coming up on 14, just about 15 minutes. Not too much play for this Mountain Drake, however. No. The lanes have been happy to farm. Yeah, it seems like it's been a little bit difficult to get a significant advantage. A lot of trades back and forth. If that bot dive worked better for Cloud9, you can expect they would have looked for it, but they traded one for one. Whoa. A little miss. Doesn't really... It's not like punishable, especially against the Gangplank. Shiro didn't have a barrel out. He can miss and still be happy with his lane presence. Quick play to mid lane, Omar God at the heels of Tuesday to stop any initiation here from Wiggly. And Tuesday has done a pretty good job given the amount of attention that's been played around mid lane to, to not fall to anything. It's mostly his team being aggressive, but uh, Wiggly has been there for a fair amount of the counter game. Tuesday as well, not having that great of a game yesterday in their matchup. Feels good to blind pick the Orianna today. Like you said, doing well. That confidence not being shaken too easily is very good to see in these teams. This Academy League is about developing, about, about seeing where you can actually get yourself to and what level you can get to. Dragon now for Omar God. If we mentioned Mountain Drake, they feel like it should be something on the plate. Definitely a very useful tool for both of these teams. Mostly team fighting, team comps, all things considered. Uh, I mean, the way Urgot wants to work is, like we said, kind of a bully in his own side lane. You can rotate up to him to finish turrets off or kills if he's winning trades well enough, but mostly just wants to focus on kind of grinding people out. And then with that advantage, becomes a, a bit of a threat. Team fights, Omar. Oh, Margod, this could be bad. Rek'Sai ultimate goes down, he gets the hit, and here comes the volley from Golden Glue. Just over the wall, gets a nice cut on that one. A lot of damage coming through if he gets himself off that work ground and just shy of getting another five volley in with that movement speed from his passive. Close stuff as they are relentless on each side here. We get out of a replay and they're right back at it. Yeah, Nobody's really dying. Gold, Golden Glue. <laughs> very slow. Had a really nice trade there overall with, mm. in that skirmish, played that very well. And with that pressure now, you see the bot lanes rotating mid to try and force this one down. It's getting a little low, but not actually gonna finish it off here. A lot of work ground. He doesn't have too much to work on at the moment, but he's still going to try to get these plays that's, towards that top. That's a mid lane that had a lot of skirmishing. You, when you see work <laughs> exactly. ground like that, you know there's been some fighting. <laughs> that's some very forward work ground as well. Yeah, right up under the turret. Definitely, it's very good. It does tell a story. I like that point a lot. Let's you know what was going down and how long ago it could possibly happen. Just over 16 minutes, oh my god, set. Well, actually, look at the circles. <laughs> yeah, it's all basically That's on so the crazy. front side of that lane. So, I mean, that, that is Talia, very strong pusher, and there's been a yeah. lot of fights in mid lane, so. See Tuesday trying to get control back of this lane. He might have gonna roam here as well. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna try and work with Omar God to get up to this top side of the map. They're looking at the blast cone to go over. They're trying to get this wave in to get a nice three-man dive off. Doesn't look like C9's quite in a position to punish this one. Barrel prep. Oh, he killed the initial minion. Beautiful hit by Fallen Bandit, giving a full wave possibly under the turret. They're going to be able to clutch down on this one. Nicely done. And not only that, they'll be able to break the first turret of the game here. Yeah. They're going to share all that gold, 283 for each of them on top of the kill. Big play out of CLG Academy. Ooh. Took a little while to get them to actually pull the trigger on it, but... Huge play. Great answer as well, though. Middle of the map opened up now here for Cloud9 Academy. The wards push forward a little further, especially with a Talia, though. Your entrance into these fights gets a lot better. And they have to be really careful here because CLG Academy doesn't quite have time to reset yet. And you see Talia on her way down. Rek'Sai after finishing that turret off is coming too. It's going to be another dive. There's that wall from right behind Red. They have the position to set it up now. Not worried about getting taken down. Fallen Bandit, however, says, I'm done in the top lane. You said needed help, bot? We got this. They hold it with a sliver of health, but it should fall soon. Save the turret, get the TP out. Yep. Good play out of both teams. C9 knowing that they couldn't have reset off the top side quite yet. Want to look for more. CLG react accordingly. They play it well, but still a good play by C9 to get that turret. Or a teleport to Yep. Big damage there, except they get an upward escape out of Tuesday as he does not have a turret. Omar God 
quietly soloing out Shelly here. A little dinner date, and he's going to be able to have Rift Herald for a separate lane. Nicely done. We're working off the ball here as Counter Logic Gaming was still holding off a lot of pressure around the map. Yeah, absolutely. All the attention goes down to the bot side. Quietly, Omar God stays top and takes that down. Working nicely in the fog of war. They head back towards the top side. That is Fallen Bandit and Shiro. 156 to 152. Still just trying to get themselves in the action around the map. Teleport is actually up for Shiro if he needs to do that beyond Cannon Barrage. 175 to 168 in the mid lane. Some good plays coming in from Golden Blue and Tuesday. We haven't really seen Tuesday hit a fight where they have popped off or really had the chance to. The laning phase is kind of extending. Just a tad. It's been a very you know aggressive laning phase once that <laughs> first kill came in. We're talking about how it was a little slow and then instantly. Boom, boom, boom. Fallen Bandit gets too aggressive in the top side, and after that, fight after fight. And overall, basically, cool. So, uh, with both these teams scaling pretty well into the late game, yep. mostly being team fight, team comps, this is still completely anyone's game here. Looks like this turret will finally fall. They just needed a few more waves. They share that as well. And it will be the back. We see, actually, Muramana finished up here for Keith quite early as he got that set up and charged. Now he'll get his Triforce with that last purchase. And here, CLG Academy has to be aware of what's about to happen. It's either going to be mid or top that the bot lane of C9 Academy starts running down. And they want to be there early to meet it so that they don't end up, once again, pushed on their turret with Keith and Zazel poking people out. And that teleport advantage of the Gangplank coming in behind them. It is fun to watch Erga. Kind of he, interesting to play him. You said not interesting. It's kind of interesting to play him, though. Yeah, yeah. There we see uh, Keith running down that mid lane, like we said. Chose to go there. Bot lane of CLG Academy. He was already headed up to the top side, so they were ready for wherever this pressure went. No outer turret in the yeah. mid lane, so a little bit of chunk on the Tuesday. I believe they got the heal out of him, so, so not bad. Vision lacking quite a bit on the map from what we've seen in the past few games. Seems like everybody has been kind of caught up in these fights, have been able to get down the correct vision that they want. Here an unknown, two or three members of Logic Gaming come out of the top side brush. This could be a very dangerous push towards mid lane. That turret's falling with the amount of health on Rift Herald right now. We'll just see how they aggress it. Oh, just five, very nicely done. And they aren't actually able to take it down right away, but they may stay for a fight. Yeah, a little surprising to see them not positioned a little more aggressively, even if that yeah. wall comes in. That turret's so low, you think you could finish it off quickly enough. There is serious teleport threat with Shiro uh, having that up, and there was a ward behind them. So I, I can understand the hesitancy that you might get collapsed on, but true. as a result, no turret taken in the mid lane. you got to risk something if you want to get something. Ocean Drake now going over to Cloud9. Get a little more sustain for staying out on the map. It'll be nice that money and flux coming in. 3-2-0 for Golden Glue. Still looking at him as a big guy to carry this game. I mean, he's got the muscles. Does he continue to have to play here? And he's flexing a little bit this game. 3-2-0. Did receive a fair amount of focus, like we said, with all those skirmishes mm -hmm. in the mid lane. Could have played them a little bit better, but all in all, a good game thus far out of the Vault Boy. Omar God back to his jungle. Haven't actually seen too much aggression out of him. Kind of making sure that he's at least always around Tuesday, making sure that lane is safe and able to kind of counter jungle if he gets the chance here. Phil now on the roam. We'll see if he can actually do anything with Omar God if they get together. And I think that's the thing that people always talk about Omar God's play style being like much more focused on team play than, mm. well, I mean, we, we, it's funny, we were joking enough about young NA junglers and how they're all aggressive, <laughs> and we were like, well, where's the tank one? I mean, uh, to be fair, that's, that's kind of what Omar God is. He is the young yep. team play focused jungler, um, and he has a lot to learn. It's a play style that is a little bit more difficult to understand, so he has a lot of room to grow, and the Academy League is, is a better spot for him to, to refine his play style. Absolutely. Definitely an area where you can kind of learn that pull the trigger aspect or not wait for a call to happen. Say, I can do this. The team would be, you know, would give the advantage. That's the small steps you take. But does the tank? Everybody always likes to tank. Need to tank. Omar God's that guy. He did get Rift Herald earlier working off the ball for Counter Logic Academy. And they were able to use that to take down mid lane. Now having a little bit of trouble controlling Shiro. It could definitely prove to be a problem here if they spread CLG thin with him continuously. 
I mean, that's the thing is the Urgot does not really have a lead over mm -hmm. the Gangplank. And Gangplank can be a little bit of a nuisance. I mean, we saw him backdoor a game tonight. Uh, he does do substantial damage with his passive to uh, you know structure, so you have to be careful. And if Urgot ever gets to a point where he starts getting chunked out by the long range barrel chains, which very easily outrange Urgot, it, it can become probably a bit of a disaster. Quite a bit of aggression, a little back and forth. Nobody really wanted the full fight, though. Get out of my jungle! Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what that Oriol was. Quick back and forth. Pushed up here. You can see the respect still being given to Fallen Bandit. No real vision for Shiro. Probably why he's playing a little weary about this. Yeah, there's some, some decent vision up in the top side that they're in the process of clearing out. So yeah. Shiro isn't too scared of ganks, but I also don't think he's in the position where he wants to 1v1. This is the Ur guy. You're, you're fine to keep farming. Let's trade farm all game. Shot in. You can see how just little that tickles Phil if they have to shield up. A little bit more on the Tuesday, however, because they're starting to use Keith a lot more to get these Mystic shots out. Protect him and let him do it a few more times. Yeah, Keith getting pretty aggressive, kind of charging through the Ori Ball, saying, I'm not scared of this, but does chunk him pretty heavily with double pen items completed and Leandry's burn coming Ooh. in. Does have a fair amount of sustain available with just, you know, the overheal yeah. rune package with the, the Relic Shield. So he's, he's back up to full already, but, you know, he, you have to be careful. Tuesday does hurt. Tuesday hurts, but he actually just had to give up. I say had to give up. Auto got that blue as it didn't go over to C9 Academy, and that really kind of takes the dancing shoes away from Orianna in the fight. That provides so much damage and power. Or Orianna with a blue buff is, is a bit of a different beast. <laughs> you already see low mana here on Tuesday. Suddenly yeah. has to be a lot more conservative with how he clears waves and how he looks for harass. Ooh, acquired taste and the flash. Zazel says, you're gonna do that? I can follow a sure and lockdown kill as Golden Glue also makes sure it'll come through the wall. Just getting a little bit too far forward there with Phil not respecting how quickly yep. Cloud9 can collapse on things. You have to realize that they basically have two to three globals available. You have the Talia wall, you have the Tom Kench Abyssal Voyage, and then you also have the GP ultimate. And here you see them using those those globals to get down onto Fallen Bandit. Speak of the devil, Tom Kench Abyssal Voyage. They go down, he's just trying to deny a little bit. He says, well, I did this. And if Keith gets the shield off Tom Kench and that still continues to play through for the assist, it does not on that one. And they'll be able to get themselves a kill on to Fallen Bandit. It's actually happening a little bit different this game. Last time we saw a top laner being a huge nuisance and the team would get something. Now Fallen Bandit's just falling and they're not able to get it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a huge difference between the Yorick pick, where exactly. at the very least, you know, the other team was losing stuff on the side of the map. CLG, after losing their mid laner, give up another kill. Not really an objective, but you're just slowly giving more and more gold to these carries. Keith now at 2-0 and 1. Shiro at 0-1 and 4. They're both becoming stronger. Very good scaling on this side. So CLG Academy has to start getting a little worried here, because now, 26 yeah. minutes in the game, with a pretty high damage team comp to Baron, you have to start getting worried about this. Also gives people like Keith and Golden Glue that ability to feel great in the position they're in. Two kills for him, a few kills for Golden Glue. Much more sure about their calls. And here a possible defense. Will it be enough for Zazel? Keeps himself alive with a great health. Just misses the tongue lash. Beautiful timing on the True Shot Barras. Cosmic Radiance just wears off, putting CLG in a very sore spot as they are trying to run for the fountain here, and they're gonna be able to get themselves on a safe side in the fog of war, but an encroaching Cloud9 Academy is throwing them off positioning and starting to take a route down mid lane a bit here, possibly towards Baron. CLG Academy feels like they got, we're getting a little fed up with getting moved yeah. around the map. They decide to pull the trigger, but it's on Zazel, who is not only one of the tankiest members of the team, he's only the support. They can't get the kill, C9 Academy collapses, Shiro shows up after dropping his GP ult. Ooh. Now they're forcing the Baron. Ooh, still a 50-50 you have to expect. They're gonna pull off if Omar God gets close enough. They don't wanna give him that range. It would've left the AD carry on the backside for that fight. And it could've been Baron damage. So they say, okay, there's a little uh, little wall hug going in for Omar God, that's it. Yeah, I felt like they were a little scared to follow up on their own wall. <laughs> Don't actually do anything with it. Back off the Baron, both teams reset. CLG does not want to get greedy. Man, that's a great wall. Let's back up. Great job. He can't go anywhere. <laughs> all right. Good job. High fives all around. We'll return to the scene of the crime to make sure nothing else is going chaotic. Looks like Phil's saying, you're gonna get more wards in. I'll clear them. He's gonna take this time to try and deny that vision. 
So if it is a Baron, CLG don't have to walk over wards to get there. And with this, you also have to note that Fallen Bandit loses his teleport again. So yeah. Shiro has that advantage. You expect to see them potentially force around here a little bit more. And if you can get a teleport behind onto an Orianna or a Zaya, you can potentially do a lot of damage to them. Has to be careful though, because GP is still relatively squishy, though he has picked up his stair gauge now. There's that damage to structures. Trial by fire. Even hurts. Looks like he's gonna stay for the hit. <laughs> that always feels so bad when you're like, I'm here to defend. Oh, you're just gonna take it down anyways. I'll back up. <laughs> oh, I could have taken some more time. Maybe, <laughs> maybe grab some raptors on the way. This or that. Who knows? A six to four in a pretty action-packed game, but somehow enough members are staying on their feet so the kills aren't coming through just yet. It's still giving a very nice 6,000 gold lead over the side of Cloud9 Academy. And now they're starting to push CLG Academy around saying, we can do Baron, but we'll just stop to fight you. Are you ready for that? It's a gold lead that definitely felt like it crept up out of nowhere <laughs> yeah. without any significant True. play, but they, they've slowly got the lead in kills. They've slowly got the lead in turrets. They have farm advantages, generally speaking, with Gangplank as well, generating more gold for himself. And so out of nowhere, yeah, there's a 6,000 gold lead and they have the pressure, they know it, and they're gonna start forcing down this Baron once again. Putting all that hard work of Phil to the wayside. All the wards are cleared. Now they're gonna have to walk back through the vision. You can see Golden Glue already knows Otto wants to get into this fight and says, bye-bye. You can't get over this. And that is going to be Baron going over Cloud9 Academy. 29.50 on the clock. They have a lot of turrets down. We should expect these lanes to start falling fast. The CLG didn't feel like they could do much about that. We saw exactly as they start the Baron, Phil ends up going back to base. It's yeah. all too easy. <laughs> Golden Glue as well, able to get a nice wall off in case there was anyone sneaking around. Whoa, even without the kills, I mean, yeah, it's five assists, but 13,200 to the 10,000 there of uh, Fallen Bandit. It's just items over items right now for Bank Plank as he gets all that gold. And this is what we were saying can probably happen in this matchup is GP gets to this point where, like, what is Urgot going to do? You can't, yep. you can't kill him. You know, the trades probably are, are close, but GP has the range advantage, and exactly. he, he can actually destroy your turrets if you're not careful. And now Shiro says... Well, I'm not going to bother trying to do that. We're just going to group up as five, and we have a lot of poke tools. You have Ezreal. GP, if he can land some barrels, is pretty scary, and Talia just keeps pelting you with her Q. The bot turret's already taken down. And it looks like they are actually going to hover top side, even with a wall of defense in, in members, if you will. Not really leaving the bottom side. They just say, we'll keep it all as a team here from mid and top. There's the ultimate. Exactly why you grab the Tom Kench, keep his back out and ready to fire in the ammunition. They waste the ulti on one. Wiggly taking a bit too much damage. Fallen Bandit reels him in. And this is going to be the GA popping. Will they be able to get there to help their teammate? And no, they aren't able to capitalize on Fallen Bandit's execution. It is a revive going in. That is an incredibly unsatisfying <laughs> interaction. As Hold on, Keith looks like he's caught out. He gets saved possibly again. A little bit of movement speed now for Zazel as he sticks Keith in that beard and then gets him out, ruffles him right out to safety. Tuesday flashes, Cosmic Radiance is on. He doesn't want to take an auto from even a minion right now. If the wind blew wrong, he'd be dead. Omar God gets himself to safety, but it is an onslaught of shots from Prey Seekers, Ezreal Qs, Talia Volleys, Tongue Lashes from Zazel. It is so hard to dodge what Cloud9 is bringing to the table right now. The never ending skirmish starts in Crazy. mid lane, bounces up the top side, comes back in mid. No one actually dies from it, but off that push, Cloud9 Academy grabs their first inhibitor of the game in the mid lane. Whew. So dangerous there, but a good job by Zazel keeping Keith alive, the GA keeping Wiggly alive, and you see just how that gold advantage is able to stop this game from getting thrown away, basically. Everybody's got one job, and they're doing it for Cloud9 Academy right now. Zazel, for sure, every time he's got that Devour up, it is safety for Keith. Even denying that, Omar got all gave a lot of reassurance to Cloud9 Academy to stay and, and just go for the long fight. It's definitely one of those kind of demotivating moments where like, I sniped the 80 carry. Ah, never mind. And it's uh, it's it's one of the, the like almost a mental battles that you fight when you leave Tom Kench up and you have to play against it, just knowing that you're gonna get denied sometimes. Yep, and it's, it's a slow kind of burn to get to that point where you've had enough. You're like, I know I shouldn't do this. Tom Kench is up, he's next to him. Time 20, you're like, screw it, Tom Kench is up and I'm gonna do it. 30 minutes in, they have Baron buff. We're not killing anybody, I'm throwing it. It's gonna happen. He did connect. 
causing a little bit of chaos, but it's not anything CLG can really put into working order right now. They're still trying to find a possible mistake from the side of Cloud9, and they really aren't showing them right now. Pressure towards the top. Bot wave is kind of just stalled out by itself. Nobody really wants anything to do with it. And Baron has just worn them for Cloud9 Academy. Overall, exactly what you're hoping for if you're Cloud9. Get the Baron, get an inhib. Yeah. Reset. Elder is coming up soon. Not too soon. A couple minutes. But you have soon such enough. An, you have such an advantage here. Eleven thousand that you're fine to take this slow. You have all these poke tools. You can catch people out of position. Just keep your vision control up and make sure you don't get picked off. Or walled off in this sense. Golden Glue on the right side of the wall. He's got Tuesday and a face-to-face -face encounter. Oh my word! The damage coming through is immense, and Tuesday gets knocked back to last week. Eight to four now coming in for Cloud9 Academy. This is Omar God going down. It's an acquired taste, and I think that actually goes to Zazel as he coughs him back up, bones and all. And that is Omar God going down. They're gonna be keep going for the kills here. Another one? Zazel? Zazel Take hungry. another one down? There we go, cannot taste that good. Ugh. He spits him right out mm, and makes taste good the metal. use of that. No, thank you. It'll be like a really sour penny. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna get in for the fight. Oh, on the fountain! Takes him down. The game is ending when fights are going on across the map. Cloud9 Academy looking and does pick up their second win of the game. Now almost out of, say, of the series, of, of the league. Yeah, of the league. A almost lot of out stuff. of nowhere. They have the Baron buff. You think a, a calm before the storm is coming, Ooh. and they find CLG Academy stuck out of position. And they obliterate the backline carries, and then Zazel gets hungry, eat some tanks. So Conologic Gaming, though, coming in with an idea. They were able to use a bit of that. The air got in the top lane, getting some sweet kills. But then as we thought, it kind of didn't do much after that. You, you get some sweet kills, and then you say, what do we do next? Yeah, it was uh, unfortunate. It, the, the ergot didn't work out at all. Uh, I can see how you like kind of want to pressure it, but they mm -hmm. didn't have a great tool to like try and snowball that more. And the bot lane uh, was tough. Uh, I mean, they have the the Tom Kench to try and survive, but Cloud Nine out skirmished them in the mid lane, and then started making really well coordinated team plays with all their globals as the map opened up. So now Golden Guardians for them, Counter Logic Gaming Academy for Cloud9 Academy, looking quite well. And again, Golden Glue can kind of be a focus here of what was going on. We saw great stuff out of the jungle as well that helped him, but Golden Glue, quick roam up on six, get that first blood, and it was kind of all over the place after. Right, we were talking about, oh, it's a little slow, and then instantly the Urgot gets a little too aggressive, thinks he has a favorable right. trade, but the whole time Shiro knows I got my team at my back. They come up this show and they, they they keep them alive. And and more big props actually we'll see in this last replay of the game is kind of Zazel playing a great game, knowing when he needs to go offensive, knowing when he needs to be that defensive factor for the team and save Keith. He's someone who uh, maybe got overshadowed a little bit in the Challenger Series last split. He was playing with Licorice, who a lot of people regarded as one of the best players, yeah. uh, especially on E United. And then Licorice, his teammate, was was largely ignored. Him and Deftly always had solid performances. Zazel was always playing well, but wasn't heralded as this amazing player. And here you get to see that he wants to make a name for himself, going out, picking up kills on him. And then he goes and hunts down the other team. Doesn't want him to get that reset off. Fallen Bandit, you're not going to go back to base and heal. I'm going to eat you. He just stands there. Amazing. I, the Digesting. First, the first acquired taste, too. He had it for at least three more licks, and he's like, no, nah, these are endgame kills, and they're mine. This is how it works for the support. I like that. I like yeah, absolutely. Doing. Zazel, big name. I think yeah. uh, a lot of people have their eye on him as an up-and-coming North American young, good support player. You could see him really rise up the ranks here, and I wouldn't be surprised if someone wanted to take a chance on him somewhere down the line on the LCS, even before this season's out. All right, we'll have to see. So that wraps up week one of the Academy League, so let's check out the standings and how they are now. Team Liquid Academy tops the table with Echo Fox and Cloud9, joining them with two zero starts. Four teams end the week with mixed 1-1 one, one results, and the Academy squads of Counter Logic Gaming, Golden Guardians, and TSM will look for their first win next week. So based on these results, Liquid has some bragging rights over TSM until the LCS squads face off tomorrow. We'll see if it has anything to do. The all-new preseason show, NALCS Countdown, starts at 1.30 p.m. Pacific with Game 1 between Liquid and TSM starting right at 2. Mark it on your calendars. The rest of the day is filled with this same matchups you just saw, but with the LCS players you know and love. Yeah, hopefully this was the appetizer to really get you ready for the main course, which is going to be Day 1 of the LCS. 
all the big name players are going to be there. Day one of the NALCS nice. for sure. But if that's too long to wait, coming up right now is a rebroadcast of this morning's EU LCS matches, starting with their match of the week, a rematch of the summer finals between G2 Esports and Misfits Gaming. That comes ahead of their day two broadcast, which starts tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central European time. Again, mark those calendars. That's it from us. Now for myself, Mark, and the entire Academy crew. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Shiro plays him into that false sense of security that he has.